Hello everyone. Thank you for tuning in and joining me once again on the Teach Me to Obey radio broadcast. I am your host, Anita Punchy Lewis. And with me once again, I have Adina Lee and Kristen Amer, two level three students at Kingdom Academy. We are here and once again we'll be sharing with you on the fivefold governmental leadership team. Adina and Kristen, welcome once again to the Teach Me to Obey radio broadcast. Good day, everyone, and it's nice to be with you once again on this broadcast. Good day, everyone. It's nice to be back here again with you and to share with you. Okay. So we've been having some very interesting discussions as we have been speaking about Ephesians 4, 11, 12, 13 thus far, as we've been speaking about the ascension gifts, which we say are the gifts that King Jesus gave to his church when he was going up to heaven, when he was returning back to heaven. So they're called the ascension gifts or the fivefold governmental leadership team. I'm going to be reading from Ephesians 4. I'm going to go back to verse 11. We'll be talking about verse 12 today, but I'm going to read from verse 11 so that it flows into verse 12. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers. Verse 12 says, To equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. I'm going to repeat that. To equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. This is the purpose of the fivefold governmental leadership team to equip the saints for the work of ministry, to build up the body of Christ. Now, I want to speak a little on this building up. I remember when we had one of the broadcasts, when I had Adina and Kristen, and one of them made the analogy of a building. I think it was Adina, and she was speaking about the laborer, the carpenter, the plumber, all the different persons who are needed in the building or the construction of a house or a building. Likewise, we are buildings. The scripture tells us that we, our bodies, are the temples of the Holy Spirit. So we come into Christianity, we are converted, we get saved, and we come in as new believers. Now, it is not for us to sit down idly and not do anything. The purpose of the fivefold ministry team is to build up. Now, let us look at this in the natural. In the natural, you're building a house. You have the foundation. You dig out the ground. You have the foundation, and then you cast that, and then you go up with the blocks. You're building up accordingly. You have different stages. Different things need to be done at different stages. You need the mason. You need the carpenter. You need the plumber and the electrician to set the things in the foundation before they actually do the casting. Likewise, we need to be built up as well. The body of Christ, believers, I want to make sure that we understand that we're not speaking about objects or you know, things that we don't understand. The body of Christ, this is human beings. This is referring to believers. So we need to be built up. And the purpose of the fivefold ministers is to build up the body of Christ, to equip them for the work of their ministry. Now, these ministers should be present or available to every believer in every church. All five of them, not just one, not two, not three, but all five of them have an active role to play and they are responsible to bring the believers to spiritual maturity and equip them for their work. That is what it is that they are called to do 
in the ministry. All right, let me give my guests an opportunity to share as well, Adina. Yes, and so all that you have said so far is true. And so it is in building a house. When you become a newborn believer and you come into the body of Christ, you too need equipping. You need to start to grow. It is not expected that you come in and you stay at that level of being what is termed as a spiritual babe. And I want to point out to you that this is also scriptural. Being a spiritual babe is scriptural. There are different ages and stages that um, Christians go through and they are scriptural. It is in the Bible. And so coming in at that stage of a spiritual babe, you need to start to grow. You need to start getting teachings and stuff like that. And so the, the fivefold governmental ministers are there to train you up, to help you to grow to the place of full spiritual maturity. All right. Very correct. As she said, you know, that we have to go through the different ages and we know that the same how it is in the natural, it is in the spiritual, in that we come in as spiritual babes and we go through a process. But the process, in order to go through the process, the way that we are supposed to go through the process, we need the fivefold ministers to be able to teach us, give us the appropriate food that is necessary, the spiritual food that is necessary for our growth, that we are trained, that we are equipped, that we are built up accordingly. Remember I said, when we look at a building, we see the building going up in different stages and different people are needed. Likewise, we need the fivefold ministers. All of them are needed at different stages to build up the body of Christ. Kristen? Yes, you guys are hitting some powerful points. And I do agree that we need the fivefold ministers in our lives to help to build us up, to equip us. And we're talking about building. And a house does not just go up on its own. There are laborers, yes. you know, that have to do the work to get that house to a place where someone can actually live in it. Mm -hmm. And it is the same thing with us when we come to Christ. We are at that baby stage. We are at that, you know, new, that foundational stage. Yes. And before we could think about going and doing anything, we need to be built probably before anything could really manifest from us. Mm -hmm. There needs to be a building up of our lives. Mm -hmm. And the fivefold ministers, they do this yes. for us. They come and they dig out, you know, the foundation to lay the blocks, mm -hmm. to pour the concrete for the base or the foundation and then eventually to add on blocks. So they're really supposed to be in our lives from ground every stage to roof. Every stage. Every stage of our lives. And remember, even after you put the roof on a house, you still have electricals to yes. do. You have the light fixtures and plumbing, yeah. toilets to put in. You still have other stuff to do as yeah. well. You know, so they're supposed to be there every step of the way, as Kristen said. Now, unfortunately... The fivefold ministers have actually been absent and or missing in many of our assemblies. In many, we can be honest and say that we do not have the presence of the fivefold ministers in many of our local assemblies. And hence, why many of us would have experienced frustration and we would have been doing all sorts of things except what it is that we are actually called to do. Every believer has a purpose. Every believer has a purpose. King Jesus put purpose in every one of us to do work. Now, the fivefold was set up deliberately. It was not by accident or chance. King Jesus set up the fivefold ministry deliberately. These ministers, they're not to operate alone. So that what the church does not remain immature. The fivefold ministers are necessary to bring the believers to a place of spiritual maturity. We are not supposed to remain at the baby stage. No, we're not supposed to remain at the ground level. We are supposed to be built up. They are necessary so that we can be built up as believers. Growing up, growing up, we need to be growing up. 
They are necessary, each one of them are necessary so that believers come to a place of spiritual maturity so that we can be effective so that we're not doing things willy-nilly about the place. Now, we have to be honest. We can say that in Montserrat, the church has been predominantly built upon the foundation of a pastor, you know, whether it's a pastor, a father, a priest, whatever it is that we want to call it. But the thing is, it has been predominantly built on one person. According to Scripture, I cannot be anything else but honest. According to Scripture, this is incorrect. Scripture does not tell us that. Scripture tells us about the five-fold, not the one-fold. Not the twofold, not even a fourfold. Scripture tells us of a fivefold. We are responsible to seek out the fivefold ministers in our lives so that we can come to a place of spiritual maturity. Each of them are necessary in our lives. Adina? Yes, and I just want to go back to something you said about the electricians and stuff like that, as in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. You would not only need the fivefold at the level of a spiritual babe. You need the fivefold throughout your life Every growing step. up. And so it is in the natural. You have the electrician. They would come in at the floor level mm -hmm. to lay certain conduits yes. and, and whatever is needed. Then as the house is being built, you need to bring the electrician back yes. at some point in time mm -hmm. to do something else. Yes. And so it is with growing up spiritually that you're going to need these fivefold ministers in your life at different intervals. They all have a role to play at particular points in your life. So they are needed throughout the life of a believer. That is so true. Because as you rightly said, it's like a spiral thing that you go around at the bottom. They come in, they lay, they put down the conduits and stuff. And then they have to come back again to pull the wires. They have to come back again to put in the light fixtures. And they have to come back when all of that is done to bring the people from the government department to make sure that everything is okay to pass, to make sure, my goodness, that this work is done properly when we come to a place of spiritual maturity. Believers, this is an exciting time. This is excitement. We have to desire that we want more. There is more that God has called us to do, to be, not just to be, comfortable and complacent at the baby stage or the childhood stage. But my goodness, there is work for us to do as spiritually mature believers. We need to get to that place. And in order to get to that place, we need who? The fivefold ministers. Who are the fivefold ministers? Let me say again, they are not people far off. They are human beings. They are not things. It's not just the name that we are calling the fivefold ministers, the ascension gifts. They are gifts in the form of human beings. The apostle, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. Human beings like me and you that have reached a place of spiritual maturity who are now equipped to come now and train other believers, build up other believers so that they too can come to a place of spiritual maturity so that the church of Jesus Christ can be effective so that there's not a daycare center that is being run all the time. No, there's babies running about. No, 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 no. You send your child to daycare. Soon from now, the children in the daycare, they're leaving daycare and go on to kindergarten. That is how, likewise, the church has to operate like that. That you, we don't have babies, spiritually immature believers in assemblies forever. That is not according to scripture. That is not biblical. That is not what Jesus Christ sent his fivefold gifts to do. They have a responsibility. They are to be used. They are servants, our servants, to be used to build up the body of Christ, to equip and train. Christian? Yeah, as you, the last word that you said there is about equipping. There's a means to an end. Yes. There's a reason why they're in our lives. Because we are supposed to be working. We are mm -hmm. supposed to get to the point mm -hmm. that we are able to work. Yes. In the natural, when you're growing up, your parents already know that eventually you're going to grow up, mm -hmm. you're going to leave the house, and you're going to work. That is what we're supposed to be doing in the body of Christ. It's mm -hmm. not about us coming and just sitting down and being members of an assembly and just being stuck in one place. There is work for every one of us to do. And the fivefold ministers equip us yes. to do that work. And it's sad, you know, in the common 
assembly, mm -hmm. they're not there. So there are people there who have gifts, talents, and all of these different things that could be used for the kingdom of God, but they're not being used mm -hmm. because they're not being equipped. <laughs> they don't have the five four ministers to equip them. So they just sit. Mm -hmm. And it's like having a machine mm -hmm. to go and dig out a hole, but there's no operator. And I just want to add there, sorry, Kristen, to say that you can't equip what has not been identified. Ah. Mm -hmm. So there so. it is, without the five mm -hmm. in place to help mm -hmm. identify mm -hmm. these yeah. gifts. The gifts are there, you know. Yes. Mm -hmm. There are gifts in the assemblies, but the five fold is not in place to help to identify, identify the gifts yes. and to help bring it out in you. Very I true. can see something in you and you're not sure how to bring out that thing in you, but I can help you uh -huh, uh -huh. to bring out that characteristic that is in you. So very true. I was waiting for him to finish to say, but he was talking about the gifts and I was going to make the point that many believers are not even aware no. of their gifts. Mm -hmm. Their mm -hmm. gifts are there. They're not aware of them. And so they're not even, sometimes, you know, you see a glimpse, you see a peeking of it, but you're not aware of what it is. You don't know mm -hmm. what it exactly it is that you're called for. And because there is no fivefold leadership in the assembly to literally pull that out. Now, there are many believers who are in assemblies and they're doing things. But is it that what they're doing is what it is that they're called for? Matthew 7.21 says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. These were Jesus' words. He says, he who does the will of of my Father in heaven. There is a will that the Father has for each and every believer. But how do I know what the Father's will is for my life? Kristen made the point that we are supposed to work. There is work for us to do. But the thing is, we do not know what it is that we are supposed to do. Are we doing his will for our lives or are we doing man's will for our lives? We do not know what it is that we are actually called to do. I don't want us to be mistaken and to think that Everybody is called to a pulpit ministry. We're mm. not saying that whatsoever. Nope. No, there is other work to be done in the body of Christ other than a pulpit ministry. Some of us may be called to be marketplace ministers. We may be called to share the gospel in our workplaces. There's nothing wrong with that in our homes, in our villages, in our communities. We all have work to do. Some of us may be called to conduct Bible studies right in our very homes. We do not have to go on a pulpit. Everybody is not called to be on the pulpit. Others may be called to have a ministry for children, ministry for youth, making the gospel fun for them at their age and exciting so that it's not a bore. We are all called to different things. Someone may be listening to me and you have a calling to pray, praying for the nation, praying for the government, praying for whatever it is. But we are not knowledgeable many times about what it is that we are called to do. We are not doing the will of the Father because of the absence of the fivefold leadership team in our lives. We are called to work again as it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. Who wants to tell me that you have adults in your house? You reach the place of adultery you have and they're not working? No. We all have work to do, but we need to what? We need to be trained. We need to be equipped. That is the purpose of the fivefold governmental leadership team. Again, Ephesians 4.12 says, And their calling is to nurture and prepare all the believers to do their work of ministry and to build up the body of Christ. Build up the body of Christ. They are to build up the body of Christ. The fivefold leadership team is necessary in the life of every believer because we need to do work. Adina? So basically, you know, when you have the fivefold ministers operating in the assembly of the believers, they are there to make the assembly strong. It builds the body strong. The body of Christ is strong when you have them operating within the assembly. Without them, it's a weakling. The assembly is weak without having the fivefold ministers, ministers. Mm -hmm. in place. Mm -hmm. Very true. Yes. They are necessary. Mm -hmm. They set the tone for the environment. Yes. To, to, for growth yeah. in the environment. Because yeah, it's about growing up. It's all about growing up and coming to that place of maturity. And without them, you would have too many 
believers on the lower spectrum of the age range of that age you know age and stage range so in the equipping some people are called as uh anita would have said to specialist ministries mm -hmm. but how do you know <laughs> yeah some people may be called to do something some people may be called to travel some and how do you know this how do you know if you don't have these ministers fun mature ministers functioning some may be even called to be fivefold ministers but at the end of the day you don't have anybody who would have walked that pathway before to train you or for you to be an apprentice mm -hmm. under so we need to shift our minds and really understand that jesus christ himself gave us these gifts for a purpose yes he gave us these gifts so that we could be effective so that we could manifest his kingdom here on earth this is one of the ways that we do it by bringing more believers to spiritual maturity and that's what the fivefold ministers would do yes that is true you know we're speaking to believers here we're encouraging you letting you know that all is not lost Maybe no minister has identified your calling. No one has taken the responsibility to train and equip you to do your work of the ministry. Week after week, you sit in a service listening to someone fulfilling their calling because the pastor or the shepherd will be on the pulpit fulfilling their calling by preaching down the word to you. Yet week after week, you go home month after month, year after year, not fulfilling your true calling. Because no one has identified your calling. And this is not the way that King Jesus has set up his church, his ecclesia, to operate. No, this is not the way. He has set up, he has given the fivefold gifts to be in our lives. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers to be effective, to build us up, to train us, and to equip us for our work of the ministry. There is a place for training and equipping. Believers, it is time to arise from your slumber of being mere bench warmers or sitting ducks and pray and stand up. Ask for the fivefold ministers who are supposed to be in your life. It is your responsibility as a believer to have these ministers in your life. You have a responsibility. On Judgment Day, we have to give account of the gifts and callings that we received, what are we going to say? Oh, well, nobody told me what to do. It's written in the Bible. It is written in the Bible. So your responsibility now is to do what? Pray and ask God to show you where it is that you are supposed to get this fivefold leadership team, these ministers who are supposed to equip you and prepare you and build you up to do what it is that you are called for so that you do the will of the Father for your life. You are responsible for your life. We cannot plead ignorance. Why? Because we have access to the Bible. We cannot plead ignorance. No longer can believers plead that they were effective because of the pastor or the religious leader who did not reveal the mind of God to them concerning their calling and ministry. You have a responsibility to pray and ask God to show you where these ministers are so that what you can have access to them in your life to bring you to the place of spiritual maturity, that you receive training to do what it is that you are called to do. Adina? Yes, and you know, I'm just here thinking, and it's very sad. There's this spiritual growth and maturity pyramid that we often refer to, mm -hmm. and it highlights the spiritual ages. And it's really sad to know that at the point, yes, the narrowest part of that pyramid, you have the spiritual adults, and the narrowest part shows that there are only a few persons mm -hmm. there. The widest part of the pyramid shows the spiritual babes. And the spiritual babes, they are not only those who would have just come into the faith. The spiritual babes, they are persons or can be persons that have been saved for years and years and years. And it's absolutely sad because what it's showing there now is that these persons being saved for so many years have not grown they have not moved from the place of being a spiritual babe. And it's absolutely sad. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, it is. And 
You know, as you said, it's on the pyramid, the section that's the widest, the lower section is the spiritual babe. So that means the majority of the body of Christ, they would be immature. Yes. They would not be a threat to the enemy. Mm. And, you know, that lower area is a dangerous place yeah. to remain. There must be growing up for you to be power packed. That's it. If you want to carry power, grow up. Who in society, the natural again, who has the power? Definitely not the children. Definitely not the babies. Not at all. The adults would dictate what happens in society. So true. And in the spiritual, it's the same thing. Yes. The spiritually mature believer has more power Mm -hmm. to affect the spirit realm, to affect the environment, to affect life in general than the spiritual babe and child or teenager would ever have. Mm -hmm. So very true. So very accurate. Believers, again, we are here to educate you, to tell you the truth according to the word of God. Ephesians 4 Verse 12 says that the fivefold are there to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. And we would have shared with you and explained to you the purpose of the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, their role in your life, what it is that they are necessary to do so that you can be built up, so that you can come to the place of spiritual maturity. I trust that you have been given much food for thought as we would have shared with you today. I pray that you would really pray and ask God to point you to these fivefold ministers so that you can come to the place of spiritual maturity, so that you can be effective, so that you do not have to be a liability. As Kristen mentioned just now, being a baby what power do you have? How effective can you be? There is a place we come in as babies, but we're not to remain as babies. There is need for growth in the life of every single believer because you have a purpose. Adina and Kristen, I want to just invite you to say your last words as we close off our program today. Believers, God accepts you right where you are, but... He won't leave you there. Not at all. God wants to equip you, build you up, Mm -hmm. and help you to grow into the purpose he has for you. Remember we said that earlier, God has a purpose for everyone. And so this is the role of the fivefold ministry gifts, to help you to grow into your purpose. Thank you. Yes, for me, this, I believe, is a wake-up call. For believers, I believe that it's time for us to wake up. It's time for us to move forward. It's time for us to actually embrace the gifts that Jesus Christ Mm -hmm. would have given to us so that we can be effective in carrying out the will of Mm -hmm. God. So I just want to encourage each and every one of you, as Anita would have said, pray, pray, pray so that you too can have the fivefold ministers, these fivefold gifts, functioning in your life. Thank you very much, Adina and Kristen, for joining me. And I want to encourage our listeners to join us again next week as we continue on the teaching of the fivefold governmental leadership team in the church, in your life. We are the church. Let me say here again that we are the church. Each believer is part of the church of Jesus Christ. We are his body. The church is not a physical building that we attend. The church is each and every born again believer. This has been Teach Me to Obey with yours truly, Anita Punchy Lewis, with my guest, Adina Lee and Kristen Amer. Join us again next week and on Monday night. We will be on Facebook live, our broadcast, we will have a live broadcast on Facebook at 8.30 Monday night. Do join us as we continue this discussion on the fivefold governmental leadership team. Do enjoy the rest of your evening.
Fightful to get me where I need to be, yeah, yeah. 